Okay. Um, and then maybe mute everybody. Except, well, mute everybody and then I'll unmute myself. Oh yeah, there we go. That works. Okay. Hey guys. Um, so excited to that Ashton initiated this. So, so excited because it's one of those things where I've been wanting to do something like this, but having somebody else initiate it is always great. Um, the cat's trying to get stop. Um, so today we're going to talk about Instagram. I know we kind of threw out the idea of also chatting about Facebook, but after talking, um, we think we're just going to keep this solely about Instagram because you could really talk all day about it and still not cover everything. So today, me, Shannon, and Ashton are just going to kind of um, share a few things about Instagram. Um, and um, so take notes because if you're new to Instagram, a lot of this could just be a lot of info and maybe overload info. So take notes. Don't feel like you have to do everything all at once. Like implement one thing at a time, master that, and then go to the next. Um, but we really all have said like, Instagram is where it's at. Um, I don't feel like Instagram has really been tapped into yet by the Color Street market. Um, and so I am really excited to share about that. So I'll go ahead and start it, and then we'll kind of move on to um, Ashton and Shannon. I am going to chat about hashtags today. Um, and I feel like hashtags sometimes are not used for your benefit and they're more of just used as like a cute little tag, you know, like a cute little tagline, like hashtag mom life or something like that. Um, hashtags are so important. Um, it's really where you're going to get those extra followers, those extra likes, extra comments. Um, and it is really like the lifeline behind your posts and getting it to reach more than just the people that follow you already. Um, and that's really the point of social media when you're using it for your business is to grow your market. So we have that warm market, which our friends, family, people that already follow us and in our, you know, friend group. Um, and then you have your cold market, which is everybody else that you haven't even met yet. So our goal with Instagram is going to reach the cold market people. Um, the people that follow you already are your warm market. Hashtags is really where you're going to find that cold market and tap into that cold market. Because after a while, the people in your warm market, are they're going to know what you're doing. They're already following you. So you're not really, re you're not really wanting to reach out to them. Okay, so hashtags. I always use my hashtags in the comment section. So instead of putting my hashtags in the description, you go ahead, post your description, post your picture, and then immediately go into the comment section, and that's where you're going to post your hashtags. So what I like to do, and I'll kind of show you, I do like a period down six times, and then I do my hashtags. So that way, they're not going to see the hashtags when they're looking in your feed, if that makes sense. You know, you only see that first line of the comments. So they're not going to see all these hashtags. They're going to see really nothing. And that's the point. You don't want people to see your hashtags, really. You just want them to be there so they're being tagged. So then when somebody goes and searches that hashtag, your picture is up there. Um, it's very important that you do it right away. If you try to go back and add a hashtag after your post has been up for a day, it's not going to show up in one of the first ones. It's going to show up, they show up, what is that, like chronological, I guess? So you want to do it immediately. So when people search that hashtag at that moment, they see it. Um, how many hashtags can you have? You can have up to 30 on a post. And is that right? I think that's right. <laughs> okay, you can have up to 30 on a post. So use all 30. Um, I promise you, and I have tested this, that when I use all 30 hashtags, and I'll show you kind of what hashtags to use for what posts, I get way more followers after I've posted something and used hashtags, way more likes and way more comments. And in, in Instagram, the likes, the comments, they matter. They really, really do matter. Um, it gives you credibility. It, it makes people want to look at your stuff. 
Um, it really is about the numbers on Instagram, right? Like everybody's looking at how many followers you have, how many people are liking your pictures. It's kind of vain, but it's so true. Um, so it's really important that you're getting those hashtags out there. Okay, so when you're thinking about what kind of hashtags to use, this is the most important thing. Especially with Color Street, we want to steer away from hashtag Color Street, hashtag B Color Street. You can use those, and you might want to use those actually within your description, just so people see like maybe that name. But that's not something that you want to be using for a way for new people to find you, because the only people that are searching Color hashtag Color Street or hashtag B Color Street are other stylists. So you're only going to be attracting other stylists when you're using those hashtags. So you can use them, but just know that it's probably not going to get you any new, anybody who doesn't know what Color Street is. And that's the point, is to find people who don't know what Color Street is um, and attract those type of people. I personally use my Instagram to share my life. Um, I share my kids. If you don't have kids, that's totally fine. You share your life. You share what you do. Um, if you do have kids and you don't want to share them, that's totally fine as well. Um, Kelly France is someone who, um, I'm trying to read your chat, follow certain hashtags. Oh, yeah. Um, so Kelly France is really good. She has kids, but you would really never know it because she just doesn't put them in there. You make your Instagram what you want to make it. It does not have to be everything that you do you market to whatever you want to market to i personally i do the whole like stay-at-home mom thing i do really girly things like i'm just that basic white girl to be honest <laughs> and so i do all that um and then i throw other things like i really like to talk about makeup even though i don't sell makeup i talk about it because i'm wanting to attract people like me who like makeup, who like girly things, who like Starbucks, um, who have young kids. Um, because that's how I, I'm going to market Color Street is to those types of people. So when I post something, say it's about kids, um, I am going to use hashtags. And you can Google this. You can look on Pinterest. There's so many things out there that can help you with how to find the right hashtags for you. Um, but I personally use, like, I don't know what all they are. I can give examples, but like hashtag intentional mom, hashtag um, stay at home mom, you know, things like that. And you can even do some research on Instagram. If you go and search a hashtag, it's going to pull up kind of other hashtags. And then you kind of want to keep in the, like, I don't really use hashtags. They're like 2 million plus because that's just a lot of competition. You know, somebody goes to, a hashtag that has 2 million posts underneath it, they're probably not going to see yours. But if you're going to like around 200,000, keeping it, I personally keep it under like 600,000. So if I see a hashtag that's within my market and it's over 600,000, I really don't use it. Um, anything under that is what I use just because I like to make sure that my post is going to be right there. Um, so that's what I use for mom posts. If I'm doing a nail post, um, I use hashtag Manny Monday, hashtag, um, I don't know, I, I can share some, but it's not saying Color Street, but it's trying to att attract people that probably like to get their nails done, um, and then they're going to see my nails hopefully on that post and go through my feed and then want to follow me or whatnot, um, and I think that is about it on hashtags, but when... And this is like kind of another training for another day on how to create eye-catching photos. But when you are thinking about hashtags, you want to make sure that your picture is eye-catching. It's light. It's going to be, it's, you know, if you use bold colors, make it really bold so that when somebody goes and they searches a hashtag, you want to make sure that your picture stands out from all the rest of them. So for me personally, I like to make sure there's not a lot of background noise. Like right here, that to me, me, everything behind me is a it's a little much for me because I feel like when somebody wants to come and look at a picture what's gonna stand out from the rest of that feed is something that like China like she, it's just her and it's a white background and it's way more eye-catching than all of the rest of us does that make sense so when you're thinking about posting pictures and you're really wanting to market it well get down and come to me when you really want to market it you want to make sure that your post is going to catch someone's eye if they're going through that hashtag feed. 
And I think that's about it. Is that everything, Ashton, Shannon, about hashtags? Yes. I have a question. Okay, so for people to find your hashtag, does your profile need to be public? Yeah. It does. You need to yeah, a public profile, um, and I think there's something new that they just did with the Instagram update, or I'm probably super late to the party, but you can, like, claim certain hashtags. So, like, you could do, like, Shannon's Nail, like, hashtag Shannon's Nails, and then every time that you post something and you use that, it, like, starts collecting that, like, for you. Um but your, yeah, your profile has to be public because then people can't access it. Like, you know, it's almost like, like it's not there. So there's a whole so, to, Another question. So Jackie, can you, like, do you keep all of your hashtags like in your notes section on your phone and you just copy and paste them to your thing every time? Okay, so what I use, and I love this app, um, I don't even know what it's called. Um, let me see what it's called real quick. It is, well, it says preview. I'll post it in the um, team page. But what it does is you can actually, like, you can uh, upload photos to the app and kind of um, make your how you want it to look. Does that make sense? But then it also has a feature where you can group hashtags together, hashtag groups. And it'll have, I don't know if you can see that. It'll have like all of them grouped together and you can name the group. So then when I'm ready to post something, I go ahead and copy and paste that, have it ready to go. So when I post something, um, I can immediately go into the, um, the comment section and paste it. So then I have like a motherhood group, a nail group. Um, I can't remember what else I did. Well, it's not a nail group. I think I do beauty. So I, I kind of try to broaden that group so that people who do makeup will want to, you know, will maybe see it because usually people who do makeup and love makeup also love to get their nails done. Um, so you're trying to think of like groups that you can market to that will want to follow you. And so then when they follow you, they're going to automatically see your nail posts. And then I think that's a good transition into stories. Who was talking about stories? Uh, me. So, um, for me, I've noticed with Instagram stories, um, you get a lot of views, obviously people that are already on your friends list, but something that I have caught on to is start tagging like where you are, like your city, your state. If you're out at, you know, Hobby Lobby, Target, whatever, like start checking in or, you know, tagging those places. So if you're not familiar with IG stories, um, it's a little option now at the top. You see like everybody's little head and there's like actual video or pictures and all kinds of stuff. So you would go in to post to your stories and then at the right corner, there's like little options of things that you can add um, onto that particular video or post or, you know, whatever. Hold on, I'm gonna try to look real quick while I... So, um, there's like a little, it looks like a little smiley face and the corner of it's kind of turned up. So you would, whatever picture or a boomerang or a video that, you know, you're posting to your story, you would tap that little smiley face and then it's got like a little location symbol. You can scroll through, there's hundreds, you know, where, you can pick wherever you want. Um, I always say like tag, like tag your city, tag where you're at because um, other people, like for me, sometimes, like if we're going to go to like the pumpkin patch or, you know, whatever, sometimes I'll even just search that in Instagram, like Clarksville. I live in Tennessee, like Clarksville pumpkin patches, and it'll show me everyone that's tagged where they're at, like what pumpkin patch they're at or, you know, whatever. But, um, not only will it pop up in the search feed, but other people who have been there or whatever, it, um, like they will see it too in their, in their search, um, like in their search bracket. Um, and I, like posting the IG stories, that's a long, that's like another, that we could do like a whole call on that too. Hi, Millie. I love you. So, um, 
IG stories too, I think if you post a picture, you're going to get 200 likes, a couple comments. That's a given. I'm like a chronic double tapper sometimes like, yep, double tap, double tap. You know, like it's just like, it's just like second nature. But when you start posting in your Instagram stories, I feel like it gets a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, people are more likely to ask you, um, Hey, like Jackie, where's that clock, you know, from that's behind you or, you know, Hey Shannon, like that shirt, you know, they're more likely to ask you in a private message through your story than they probably would be, you know, in, in any other way. So the same thing goes for, um, us sharing about color street. Um, something that we, me, Jackie, Shannon, Tanea, like we all learned previously is when you post about something, don't give it all away, like right out of the gate. Leave it so there is a question. Like you just did your nails and you're holding your coffee cup and your nails look so good. Don't say one word about what type of, or like what the, like what the name of that color is or what the name of that design is. Like leave that open because people will then ask you like, oh, I love your nails. Number one, where are they from? Number two, which one is that, you know, or whatever. Same thing in your stories. Um, you could do a video of you putting one on. Um, you could do a boomerang, like, you know, get, like doing like having one hand done or whatever. Um, people are more likely, I think, to reach out to you in a story than they would necessarily on an Instagram. And I think maybe that too just depends on, you know, on your following or whatever too. But for me, I think too, Instagram stories is more fun. I kind of feel like I have a little bit more freedom. Um, like, uh, I don't know who it was. I don't think it was that France girl, Jackie, what's her name? Fran Anyways, it was somebody else that I had watched their story and there was like outtakes. She did like two or three Instagram video, like real short outtakes of her trying to put on the strips on her nails. And then the last one, she was like, I, you know, finally, or, you know, whatever. And I stayed all five of those videos because I was like, this is hilarious. Like, you know, like this is stuff that we, you know, deal with too. So I just feel like people can get a better idea of who you are. Um, and again, like subtly what you have to offer with your business in your story than a post like with your hands up in up in the way like I have color street on my nails like you know so I know like Jackie and I talked like you know we want to be able to share but do it in like an organic way not like an obnoxious way um so stories I feel like just go like go wild with them if you put your nails on and you screw them up share that and then share how you fix them if you um, get like tomorrow, I have a crap ton of strips coming, like three boxes worth. Like I'm going to spread those babies out and I'm going to do something fun. Like share about that. Um, you know, that's stuff that people want to see. Um, and I think too, like checking in where you're at, um, you can do a hashtag in your Instagram story too. So if you, um, like I had said before, and I'll have to come back to this. Maybe I'll just leave it like in the, the comments somewhere. There's a way to do it like where you can, I don't know, I don't know how to word it. Like where you can have certain hashtags that, um, what does this say? Oh, we've got 10 minutes. Okay. Where we've got like certain hashtags that um, you can like kind of claim, which just means that, you know, those are the ones that you want to follow or if you use them, that's where your stuff's going to go. Um, but, you know, make yourself a hashtag, but make it something clever. Maybe nothing, nothing like color street. Have it be something completely, complete, like completely different. Like Shannon like owns the word blissful. I don't care what anybody says, like blissful, blissfully. Anytime that I hear that word, no matter what it is, I think of Shannon. Like make it something like that. Like people think of her because of that. And so when you're posting to your stories, when you're posting to your feed, um, include that one because then people will sub will follow that hashtag. Um, I followed one and I can't think of what it is, but I just followed it whatever day it was that I signed up just because I want to know, like, I'm going to have all these color options and design options. Like what are some really cool ways to, you know, put them on, but, um, make yourself a hashtag. And then every time that you post, use that hashtag, not only is it going to be, 
something that's going to collect all of your posts in one spot, which is going to be great. You know, like how fun to do like even a post with that, like, you know, here's my 50, here's like a screenshot of my 50, you know, photos or whatever. But people, if they like you and they like your vibe, they're going to follow that hashtag because, Ooh, Shannon posts this and this and that, or, Oh, Jackie always posts, you know, beauty stuff and nail stuff and this stuff. And, you know, so they're going to start connecting. They're going to start associating that, that hashtag and the stuff that comes with it to you as a person. Does that make sense? Is that, yeah. So, um, that's kind of all I have. I just like Instagram stories just in like better in general. I think it's just fun. Like your kids, when you're out, when you're doing stuff, you know, um, even, I don't know, probably more of you guys who are more local when you guys have like, I think Shannon posted about some coffee thing, right? Like, do you guys like get together? Like if that's the case, like what a fun, that would be a fun in like, um, IG video too. Like, you know, this is what we do. And this, because of color street, because of the income that it's creating, this is why we get to do coffee dates once a week. And it doesn't upset anybody, you know, it's for us. Um, so just think of it that way. I'm probably the worst person because I always think of it like, oh, this is like a perfect post. Like, oh, this would be like a perfect post. Like, you know, hold on, let me get my phone or, you know, whatever. But when you go to your stories, I think people can kind of see the raw version versus the perfect lighting, smoothed out stuff, you know, whatever. So post to both, but, you know, like I challenge you guys, like just have some fun with your Instagram stories, check into places and watch how many people are viewing your stuff? Like you would not believe it. Like it takes your story so much further when you start checking into stuff. So, okay. It's Shannon's turn. And I'll be quick to, to add to the stories thing. I think when people are watching your stories too, and I could be wrong on this, but I feel like when people are watching your stories and especially like if they respond to your stories, you're more likely going to show up in their feed as well. Um, cause I've noticed that like I had someone message me the other day and then all of a sudden I noticed like I never see her stuff. And then all of a sudden I noticed like I started seeing her stuff. Um, okay. So I'm going to talk a little, obviously about Instagram short too. And, um, I'm going to talk about the highlights. So if you know what I'm talking about, it's like, if you go to your profile, there's like little bubbles and they're called your highlights. And basically what it is, is it's, videos or pictures from your stories. So after you post a story, you can click highlight. It's like in the bottom left hand corner. I'm on my phone so I can't show you. Or right hand corner, you click highlight and then you can pick what highlight you want it to go under. So I have a nails highlight and it literally just says nails. And anytime I post, even if I'm not talking about my nails, um, I will post, send that picture to my highlights and I forget sometimes, but I try to remember. So if I post a picture with my coffee cup and it has my nails in it, I send it to my highlights. Um, and recently I've been getting sales from that. Um, the other day someone messaged me and the first thing I saw when she messaged me was a picture and I was like, oh, that picture's from like six weeks ago. But it was because she was looking at my highlights and I was like, whoa, this is kind of crazy. I never really thought somebody looked at them, but I guess if they're going to your profile, and they see those highlights, they're going to look at them. Um, so try to always just send those and you can do it. Like I have one for my kids. I have one for our dog. Um, it's just a way for people to go back and look and see like all of your highlights. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to talk about is just sharing without selling. Um, I talk a lot about this too because I love doing it, but it's just basically all you have to do is share a, about something. So if I'm going to share about Grove Collaborative, because I love Grove Collaborative, and I'm going to share about this awesome hand sanitizer, you better bet I'm going to be sure my nails are in that picture. And I'm not talking about my nails. I'm talking about this hand sanitizer, but my nails are going to be in the picture every single time. And I will get messages not about the hand sanitizer but about my nails or someone will just post hey i like your nail color or whatever it is um so just or if i'm cuddling with my kids i make sure my hands are in the picture when i'm cuddling with my children um just whatever it is always try to find a way to um 
make sure your nails are in the picture because then people are seeing them without feeling pressured by like a sales post or anything like that. Like I never, ever, ever post sales posts on my personal Instagram, Facebook stories, anything. Um, unless like I have a deal or something like, you know, something I'm doing, but, and I may have only done that like once or twice, but I just never sell my nails. Um, I liked what Jackie was talking about earlier about like kind of finding your niche. Like mine is home decor. I love home decor. And so I can find people through Instagram by hashtagging things about home decor. I'm so glad you talked about that, Jackie, because I have quit doing that recently and now I need to pick that back up. But, you know, find your niche because we all is, this isn't a cookie cutter business. We all have people that love us. And if you're selling yourself through home decor or makeup or a dog breed, you know, whatever your kids, whatever it is, if you're, people are more likely going to purchase from you um, because they feel kind of connected to you in whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. So definitely, um, yeah, do that and just nonchalantly share. It's so easy. Um, and so, yeah, I'm this way. I never really talk about Color Street on my Instagram pages or my regular pages. I just will post, you know, pictures. And I'm real big. Like, I do not, I don't like posting. Um, I talked about that in a training video yesterday, but posting like graphics from you know, the website and stuff like that, like post your own pictures, being authentic is huge. That's all I got. <laughs> that's, that was so good. So good. Uh, I want to encourage you because I know that's so much info, like, and I hope you can hear me because we have the phone going, the TV going. Um, but I, I know it's so much info. And like I said in the beginning, like choose one, try to master it, and then go to the next one. Um, every single one of these, can be done on its own without the other one and give you great success. So try to just master one and then go to the next one. Um, for me personally, I have so slapped on Instagram stories. I have not po posted Instagram stories in weeks. So here I am thinking and listening to Ashton, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to start doing that. But if I went and I started sharing on my Instagram stories all about nails, what are people gonna do? Well, if they're not interested in nails, they're going to unfollow me, like, instantly. So I think easing into it is huge. So I'm going to start posting things about Millie, posting things about what I'm eating today or whatever. And I, I love how Ashton said, like, she's all about Instagram stories. I am too. I don't even scroll, th scroll through my feed anymore, hardly. I only look at Instagram stories. Like, I'm so nosy, and I love watching people. <laughs> And I think a lot of people out there do, so I think they're doing the same thing. So keeping it just kind of like all about your life, easing the nail, nails in like Shannon does, and just sneaking your nails in every single time. Um, and then just having that mindset of, I'm not really trying to sell on my Instagram. It's just a really good outlet to share about it. And if somebody's interested, then they'll come to me. And then also, you'll every now and then post those post about joining your team or about a sale that you have going on and then people will be like okay well I'll try it this summer I want more info um, because you're not blasting it I think people are more receptive to hearing about what you offer um, when they feel like comfortable that they can come to you and you're not just like all all over them you know mm -hmm. um, any questions I know Megan had mentioned that she had just started your like uh, an account just for nails. Um, and I don't know, like I, I thought about doing that, but then I thought, well, then am I only going to attract people who know color street or is it just going to be for customers at that point? Like, are they only going to be following me because of that? Like, so I, I kind of decided not to do that just because I felt like it was a lot. Like if I was going to do it, my personal and my, um, my color street. So Megan, I don't know, what were your, like, what were you thinking about that? Uh-oh, hold on. You got a, okay. Ashton, there we go. Okay, did I do it? Yeah. I was just thinking, okay, so I'm the type of person, I hate 
seeing people like advertise everything. So I kind of wanted to do a separate page just because I didn't want people to get tired of me posting. But now seeing that, you know, mixing it in with like real life stuff, I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know where I was going with it. I just, someone said something about it and I decided to go ahead and make one. I also didn't know how to like, do, do I request to follow everyone and then let them follow me if they want to? I don't know. I did. I opened, I opened me a nail page the other day too. And the reason I did it is because Kelly France does it. <laughs> like, you know, she has a personal page and a nail page. And so I more or less point, what in my hopes is, is that the people that are purchasing from me, the people that do love like the nail side of my life are going to follow that. Um, so I don't know what it'll do, but I just thought it might be something where I can, you know, like today I went to my mailbox and it was full. Like that's something I can post on my wall in my nail page where I just posted my stories on my personal page. And then I'm just tagging my nail page and everything in hopes, you know, that some people that are coming to that will go to that. We'll see. Kelly France does it. <laughs> like it was a good move. Yeah. And I agree with that. I think as long as you're keeping it very lifestyle looking, like yeah. res, where it's all, it's all like real post of her nails. It's not yeah. a bunch of like, it's not a bunch, a bunch of pictures that she's found on Pinterest. Yes. You know, and is adding pictures just to kind of fill up feed. I think if you're keeping it lifestyle oriented as in like your nails, you know, kind of like a behind the scene almost. Yeah. Um, of color street. Well, that's the other day I posted a picture of Bennett walking to the mailbox carrying envelopes for me. And so that's I'm trying to do it like very like that, like life, not sales. I don't want it to be a sales Instagram, you know, just lifestyle. We'll see. <laughs> we lost Jackie. She's chasing after our kid. Sorry, I was trying to get, no, she was starting to get, um, any other questions? And like I said, I mean, we can like go even more in depth on anything, any questions you have. Um, this is kind of just like a little overview of Instagram and little things that you can try to implement. Um, I think the most important thing, if you are wanting to keep just one account and learn how to share and not be that person that we all know who like starts selling a product and then here they are like coming hot out of the gate you know, with all these graphics and pictures they found online, like it's just really important to just, just keep it to yourself. Like people are following you for you. So keep it to you. So, you know, when you do change your nails out, go live if you want to go live or just do some stories on your Instagram stories. And then like Shannon does so well at is just posting her nails and every little thing she can find. Um, it's, it's just really helpful just to kind of ease into it and not just be hot out of the gate. Like, oh, I'm a color street stylist, buy for me, here's my link. Like, I like, I don't even put my link to my VIP page on my profile. Um, not, it, not that it's bad, it's just, I don't want people to come to my profile and see like me trying to sell something. I almost don't even want people to know I sell anything until they really start to follow me. And, you know, start to learn that, oh, okay, well, it looks like she sells some nails. Like, what is this? Um, so, yeah, I think that's all I have. Ashton, do you have anything else? No. I want that, baby. Give me her. Yo, she is on the floor. Where is she? Rolling. <laughs> Pitching a fit. Um, so, I think it's nap time. But I'm so glad y'all all hopped on. We are hopefully going to start doing this. Um, more often weekly and trying to figure out better times um, so uh, so yeah y'all if you ever have any like topics things that you want to go over just let us know okay guys so we'll post the recording later if you have stylists who weren't able to hop on let them know um, and then we will chat later bye guys <laughs>